I'll call to order this meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, first item is to confirm the future meeting dates. Uh, we're scheduled to meet uh, Thursday, March 8th and Thursday, March 22nd, both times at 6.30. That's still good with... Fine with me. Okay. Those will, uh, meet, meeting dates are now confirmed. Um, citizens speak. Is there... Any citizen that wishes to address the board? No. They were all here at 8 o'clock, but they left because it was so late starting, That's because right. one of us was so late. I can't imagine who that might be. <laughs> uh, next item is uh, consolidated facilities appointments. Since it, I was late, I'll read them. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, just, I was just going to give a, an overview on this is uh, two positions that the Board of Selectmen are being asked to approve in the cons new consolidated facilities department. Both these individuals are currently working for the town in the school department. Um, originally, these jobs, these are union position jobs in the town DPW union. Um, nobody in the DPW union applied. I spoke to the superintendent and I spoke to the uh, Union uh, on the DPW side and the union on the uh, school side, and, and they felt it was okay to post these in. So these would be like lateral transfers, if you will. And is, have, is the school department not going to fill them on their side? I don't, I don't have that answer. I have to check on that. Okay. So um, be nice if that could happen. But um. yeah, which then leads to the question: Does the move mean that there's additional personnel, or well, would be additional personnel? Well, it, it probably does in the sense that these were open positions in, in um, uh, these, these DPW or the consolidated facility? These, these will be, if approved by the Board of Selectmen, will be consolidated facilities. And but these were the two positions that were moved from? From the DPW, yes. So the budget authority is already there right. for them. So it wouldn't be like it's new dollars? No, there's no new dollars here. It's only a, it's basically a transfer of two individuals working for one town department to another town department if approved. <coughs> And these positions were already approved at the special town meeting for funding. With, with a goal is to kind of eventually get a whole, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the, everybody under one umbrella. Right. It would be nice not to see them replaced if that was possible. Right. Okay, then, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to approve the appointments of David Hawes to the position of W-4 maintenance craftsman and James Curley to the position of W-3 maintenance man. Uh, in the Consolidated Facilities Department, contingent and, and effective upon the approval by the Personnel Board. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Uh, next item is the town clerk interim appointment. And before we raise that issue, I just uh, feel that the, the Board should recognize um, the long term of service of James G. Mullen who spent uh, 36 years as the Milton Town Clerk. And um, prior to that, he served on the Milton School Committee. At the age of 21, I believe he was the youngest elected uh, school committee member in the state. Uh, I'll never forget when I was at a town meeting, and I thought it was the beginning of his uh, rise to political popularity. At, the Milton Town meeting, one of the elder statements who was, was a good orator um, put Mr. Mullen down by referring to him as Master Mullen. And I'll never forget when James G. Mullen Jr. stood up and let everybody know that he was Master Mullen. And I think that was when he's, that, that was, that's him. And he also uh, was a long term member of the, the Board of Selectmen, selectmen I think. All three current uh, selectmen are, are very familiar uh, with him, appreciate um, his years of uh, dedicated service to the town. That's, yeah, good. that's another statement probably. Uh, um, yeah, Jim has given a lot to the town, a lot more than <laughs> most of us can imagine, and, and a good friend. Well, I, I, you know, I think, I, I think there's a silent majority of people out there that, uh, you know, over the years, this, this is 40 years that he's been in town government, but uh, uh, 
the number of people that he's helped behind the scenes uh, th that I know of uh, is, is, it's a large number of people. It's a huge amount of people. And I mean, I, his father and my father were best friends growing up. We, our families go back a long way. And uh, I wish him well. I hope, uh, I hope he's made the right decision. I tried to talk him out of it. I think you guys did too. Uh, I, at least that's what I heard. Um, uh, you know, but he's at, he's making some changes in his life. He's at a kind of a crossroads with a number of things. And, I, you know, I just hope he's, he's, he finds, uh, you know, some contentment uh, with this, this change he's making. And uh, uh, that's what we all want. And, uh, you know, Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy's had some changes in his life recently. And, and uh, uh, we just, I think that everybody in town just wishes him the best, you know. That's and true. Uh, uh, we're certainly going to miss him here in the town hall. And uh, I mean, I've talked, I've spoken to him more since Friday, I think, since than I did when we were selectmen together. Uh, you know, so he's 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 still with it. He's still giving me a lot of crap. And he's done some non-political things with me that I'm forever grateful to. As an example, uh, each year for the past 20 years. My Learn to Skate with its 200 children has had Santa. Jimmy as, as Santa. Right. And he's uh, just been wonderful. And with the Learn to Skate kids, I have them tape. The, I hope none of them are watching. I have them tape their, their name on their helmet. <laughs> so when Santa comes, they are absolutely amazed <laughs> that know. Santa knows them by their first name. That's how smart Mr. Mullen was. <laughs> no, we wish him the luck, all the luck in the world. I think uh, pursuant to that, pursuant to Chapter 41, Section 14 of Mass General Law, to approve the appointment of Frederick C. Frithson, who seems like a really great guy, who was a former town clerk in Rockland, I know Rockport, Rockport yeah. uh, to assist the town upon the retirement of town clerk James G. Mullen, Jr. at the current rate of compensation received by the former town clerk, uh, 1592.30 a week plus $75 each month as a member of the Board of Registrar of Voters for the period of uh, February 27, 2012 to April 30, 2012. I'll second. Any further discussion? Well, except that this will cover the election. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the Tuesday, next Tuesday's election, the, pr the uh, presidential primary, yeah. and, the, uh, and the town municipal election. And at that election, someone will be elected to, fill, to, to carry on. Right. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. And Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mullen will, because he's still, uh, um, you know, still the town clerk until the end of this week, will swear in the interim uh, tomorrow morning. Sounds good. All right. Uh, next item is the assistant registrar appointment. I make a motion to approve the appointment of Dr. Kevin P. Donahue, 84 Center Lane, to the Board of Registrars to fill a vacancy created by the retirement of Mary Elizabeth Brown to serve through May 2013. Uh, I'll second the, uh, the motion. Discussion? Uh, I, I, would, I would just add that uh, it might be appropriate for us to send a letter of thanks for, to uh, Betty Brown for her service yeah. uh, as yeah. a registrar. I think that would be an excellent idea. And she's a former employee and yeah. uh, been a registrar for a number of years and right. been a, a wonderful person. Absolutely. And a good friend to everyone. She, mm -hmm. yeah. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Uh, next is discussion of the town meeting location. Uh, Mr. Chairman and the board, um, you may have seen an earlier email from the 350th Anniversary Committee. They had done a little research and somewhere along the line had discovered uh, information that town meeting or the first few town meetings or a number of town meetings for that matter were held at the first parish church. And they were wondering if it would be a good idea if for this annual town meeting, I think the first day is Monday, May 7th, um, could be held at the First Parish Church. Um, as, as this board knows, that comes under the moderator's responsibility, the location, and whether or not it's suitable for, for holding a town meeting. Um, Brian Walsh had asked me to do a site walk with him this past Saturday at the First Parish Church, which we did with the approval of you know, the, the parish. Um, 
and it does seem to be suitable for at least one night of town meeting. It would be probably, if, if it's okay with this board, to we'll approve that site, um, it would be held just like a small first night meeting. In other words, it only runs until about 9, 9.30. Um, we would kind of rearrange the articles a little bit so that they're, uh, you know, it's, it's big enough to hold all the town meeting members and a few other people, but it's probably not big enough to hold all your department heads and, and a number of other people. Um, so the agenda would be, if it's approved, would be, you know, some of the articles that are pretty boilerplate and uh, maybe have a little ceremony in, in recognition of the 350th anniversary. And we'll kind of work all, all, all those details and logistics. It will be live television. Uh, I did talk with the MPEG uh, folks, and they, they can run a, a live telephone or electric line into there, so we'll have live television. We'll have to work out the details, but it seemed like a nice uh, idea and now for the looking boards, for the board support on this. For the boards to be in session, would they meet here? Um, that or we have to work that it? out. They could probably meet here. Um, we would probably, the first night, we would probably have it so that the, the boards, if they wanted to meet, could meet the second night. That's a regular high school, um, but the first night, Again, most of the items, there'd be, there'd be enough room for the warrant committee at the front of the church, the board of selectmen with their table, the moderator, and, and the clerk uh, to record the, the minutes. Um, that's about all there is in the front of the, the okay. church, if you've ever been over there, and then there's the, all the pews, Beautiful. which will hold all the town meeting members. And we will send out a notice, again, if it's approved by this selectman, we will send out a, a notice to the town meeting members informing them that the first night of town meeting will be at the first parish church. Right. I think it's a great I, idea. I think legally, uh, don't you have to uh, put, even though it's one night with a different address, don't you have to put it on the warrant yes. that goes yes. into the yes. home? We're working on that, how, how that's going to legally be. Uh, but that will all be noted okay. uh, as, as we go forward. So is, if the board's are good with the location, the town moderator's good with the location, we'll work out all the logistical stuff to include notifications. And I saw Brian's email, so he said yes. there's no problem with the location. So well, you, were, you were at that first one when they had it. Well, I was going to ask you, <laughs> who was the location when there was also people upstairs? There was that was, oh, that was, that here. was the Old Town Hall. Yeah. They, had the, oh. they had the balcony over the yeah. Old Town Hall. I actually sat in that balcony oh, for so a town meeting at one point when I was a little kid. <laughs> My father brought oh, me to my first oh, okay. town meeting. So that was here. That was that was in the red brick town hall, okay. the old one. Yeah. 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 That, remember that they had the the balcony I just remember up. Over? Something about yeah. the meeting was here, but the people could be watching from up. Top. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah, being exactly. in it years ago. But yeah. yeah. But they only opened up. I think they only opened up that upstairs part for town meeting. Could be. Yeah. But it, it was an annual town meeting on Saturday, so it. Yeah. Yeah, you, you did all, all the articles right. in one yeah. day. It wasn't like at night. They started at one o'clock, and yeah, that's how they, they wore you down by the <laughs> yeah, by five o'clock. That's when <laughs> you got the real really heavy heavyweights <laughs> articles. Daily business done. Yeah. <laughs> so if the board's okay with that, I'm fine with that. Do we have to make a motion I'll on that? Make or a motion to approve the first night. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the uh, location for the first night of town meeting to be at the first parish church. Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. I, I, I just like want to, to comment that that committee is doing a great job uh, wonderful coming time. up with something like this. And I also want to recognize the church and the church leadership for allowing us the use of the uh, mm -hmm. facility. Okay. Um, town administrator's report. I just have one item, Mr. Chairman. You would ask me today, and I just want to give the board some information uh, about the, uh, I think there were a couple of emails regarding the Ulan Rink and upcoming season, not that this year is over yet, but uh, next season is fast approaching and what's the status of that legislation that would allow the town the possibility of entering into a long-term lease. And the person I've been dealing with is a, um, a Warren Madden and he, he works for the Division of Capital Asset and Management, um, DCAM is, is the state agency's uh, nickname. And he's, he's away until Monday, so I was unable to talk with him directly. But the question came up um, on the, the users are all getting ready for next season and wanted to know what the, the rates would be, if there's any changes and any changes in the um, hours. Um, and that question, I think, is still unanswered until the next meeting of the board, which will be next Thursday. 
I should give you, be able to give you an update, but as I understand it uh, from early discussions uh, with Mr. Madden is that DCR has owned that property for a long time and it was DCR that entered into the permit um, with the town of Milton to work for five years. Um, subsequent to that, there's now legislation which was signed by the governor that allows the town first right of refusal on a 25-year lease. W when that occurred, again, as I understand it, it shifts from DCR to DCAM. That, 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 that the responsibility then shifts to uh, the, the Department of Asset Management to handle the, the lease uh, Negotiation. portion. Um, so they would end up doing a, an RFP. The town, again, has first right of refusal, so the selectmen can make a decision when that RFP comes out whether they want to um, apply for that uh, lease. Once you have the lease, then you'd probably turn around and do another RFP. The board selectmen would do an RFP to see who, who's interested in managing it for 25 years. And well, no, you, you wouldn't. Would you really put it to the management for 25 years? Well, you could up, up to 25 years is the way the legislation was, and that's what town meeting authorized the Board of Selectmen. Well, yeah, that's the lease agreement, but you wouldn't want to put the management out there 25 years, would well, you? Well, that's up to the, well, first you've got you to, first you got to take the lease, and then you've got to decide how I you guess want to do it. I guess it's a practical but, problem. Okay. You're going to have to do an RFP at some point to right. see who's going to manage it. Then you have to enter a contract with people who you select to manage. Right. It's going to have to be fairly lengthy because you're going to have the same problem of uh, if you're going to ask that management agent to invest capital funds in it, you're still going to want them to be assured of enough time to amortize those capital expenditures the same way. So if, if we were to go out and have a 25-year lease and go out to carry and you only get up for three, they're going to have the same problem that they had before. Well, in I mean, terms of the, the thing is, any, any long-term capital expenditure, you, you're going to have to it's going to be the lessee that's not the manager. It's the lessee that's on the, that, that has to apply for. for uh, well, I'm talking about if, if the way the Curry has invested money in the rink now, if, if we're going to expect that, that to continue, uh, then they, I think, need some time to recover that, that investment. So right, I think well, that's so, a practical but it's, problem. It's written into, the, into our agreement with Curry that if, if, uh, if we were to go out to bid with a management contract, and, and for some reason, Curry was not to get. They have to be reimbursed. They'd sure. have to be reimbursed That's for right. the capital that they put into it now. The, That's right. Yeah, the, Curry's committed to uh, 145,000 for the first year of capital improvements, and 20,000 for each of the next two years. With what you just said, if, if for any reason somebody else took over, um, the, Curry would have to be reimbursed for the expenditure they made because that's what they negotiated right. with us uh, and which is is reasonable you can't blame them for wanting to try to recover right. some of their in investment if if it went to somebody else what i think we need to be concerned about is what about the the short term situation right now curry needs to really in terms of its own budget needs to be figuring out numbers for next year all your users right now have to figure out what their numbers are for next year in terms of you take the youth hockey for instance all its programs they're now going to be trying to figure out how much money the participants parents are going to have to pay in order to figure out that money you need to be able to project in there what what your ice costs are going to be under the current rules that we've been operating th this has been the dcr's position that the DCR says that they are to review and approve all rate increases, that rate increases are allowed, but that they must be reasonable in order to protect the public purpose of the rink. Right. So short term, I'm hoping that the town administrator can get some information that would enable us to, to think about next Answer. year yeah. as, as, we th as we're also thinking about what we're going to do in terms of a long-term lease right. and what number, and that has to be figured out. We know we can go up to 25. Right. What's, what's the best number that should be in the, the best interest of the town? Yeah, I, I, you saw yeah. the email from Peter Filoni that I answered. Yeah. And, and, and I, did you see it? I too? did see it, yes. All right. <clears throat> well, here's the thing. We're going into these negotiations with the state, this DCAM, 
okay? It's a 25-year lease at a dollar a year. That's going to be the RFP. You know, we have right of first refusal. Mm -hmm. However, I think we're going to get into a, a negotiation process on, you know, the dispensation of the capital uh, as, you know, how, how capital needs are, are, who's responsible for what capital. I mean, DCR yeah. had something under the permit, but they're going to want to try to, ex you know, exalve Absolutely. themselves of everything. Of everything. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to come back and say, no, wait a minute, hold on. Mm -hmm. This is what, this is what, we're not going to, it's your building. If the roof goes, you're responsible. Yeah. You know, I do think that Curry has done a great job because, I, you know, I, I, you know better than me, Bob, but as you, you know, I've seen you at the rink, at the, those games where I know the, the record. What's the record? It's 16, 3, and 2. Thank you. Okay. But that east ceiling, you know, uh, Tommy McCarthy, the park commissioner works down there yeah. at night, he was telling me that um, uh, the, the second, ge uh, the second uh, uh, generator thing that they have, has, no, has only been turned on once all winter. He said that's a tremendous savings. Mm. Tom knows this stuff. Yep. And um, he, sa he said that, 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 that east ceiling is working perfectly. Mm. So, you know, I think we're moving towards at least breaking even. What we want to try to do, we have to keep in mind w of what, what we're all about here. Uh, the, the board of, of Marion McGettrick and, and Kathy Fagan and, and myself stepped into this thing because Milton Youth Hockey asked us to right. kind of protect them. And we're still trying to do that. We've got to try to keep the hockey players' expenses as low as possible, but yet right. it's be not lose neutral. money so that we're, we're going to the town meeting for money because we'll get killed. Right. It's got to be revenue neutral. So, it, you know, that's, it's a tricky thing. But, but that's why I answered Peter the way I did because we don't know what this capital thing is. Mm. And we don't know... Um, we have to get a report from Curry about the current status and what we lost this year. And they indemnified us for up to $400,000 in operating losses over the first three years. Yep. But we're coming up to the edge of that, that, that period now. I mean, yeah. this next year is our third year. I get a little bit concerned when I hear that DCR is sort of moving lateral over towards the DCAM. And I get concerned because... I want to make sure that everybody knows the rules. Right. I know the rules we've been playing by. Reasonable rate increases are allowed, whether it's permit or lease, this kind of thing. Um, I don't want to get hit cold with some new kind of rule, like you're talking about capital expenses. Right. Uh, if, if you need major repairs, then the, the way it is right now, we're looking to the state because it's, it's their building. That's right. what it is. But and yeah. we're, we're already paying for it with our state tax dollars. Right. And, you know, I don't think we should lose sight of that either. Well, it, you're right. And we have a couple of things going for us. Um, the governor lives in the town. This is the governor's uh, department. You know, uh, we have a fairly active... I, I disagree with what Senator Joyce said at the town meeting, but we have a fairly active uh, uh, legislation legislative delegation, sure. um, and, and they can help us with this. Um, I think they know what the score is. In the end, it's not our building. Uh, I, you know, I, I think you agree with me, and I, I hope you agree with, with Bob and I. I. I know Bob said it in the past. I mean, this, this rink was built with all of our money and should not be privatized, and that's why we're stepping in, we stepped into it. Because if it, right. the, it the, was, best, the best possibility of this staying as cost affordable as possible is for the town. To, to, to run it. To do it the way but it's got to be revenue neutral. Right. It can't cost the town any money. Mm. I mean, that's that, I'm glad you said that. That's how I kind of feel, right. revenue neutral. Um, I've heard people talk about, oh, the rink can make a profit. No. Not no. from my experience. Right, no, right. it should. Whether it be the, the bowling alleys, there was a fad where they, everybody built a bowling alley, then there was fads where everybody was building skating rinks. From my knowledge of skating rinks, whether it's the former Nick Abraham's rink and Walpole, uh, the Weymouth Skating Club, or uh, Ridge Arena, they went, they changed. Right. They all became different entities. It could <coughs> be, like out at the Walpole right now, it could be a Walgreens there. Right. Um, Ridge Arena is a bunch of condos. Yeah. It, it's yeah. just, those kinds of sightings uh, sort of prove that the ice skating business is tough to make money in. Oh, it definitely is. 
because your revenue, for the most part, is coming on your, your hourly rate charge. You can pick up revenues in some other ways, but for the most part, it's right. hourly rates. And then, for the most part, there's, like, there's peak hours. There isn't that demand on a Monday through Friday. Right. Plus, plus a peak season. You've got November in, in, to, in in November morning, to May or November not that to April. April. It isn't there. Yeah. The money's not there to be made in certain hours. Sure. So the, but what I, I, what I do believe is I think it's the, that a rink can be self, at, at least self-sufficient so that you can pay your bills with your revenue. Right. And I think, like right now in the past few years, we've been heading in that direction. We've seen a tremendous decrease in the, in the uh, expenditures you in know terms what, of like cost efficiency. You know what, Bob? When the state had it, there was wasted electricity 24 hours a day. Yeah, yeah exactly. and, they, they, and, and Michael Tool kept telling us that, you know, yeah. Toolsy. And, and, and he, he had a way, and he's done that down at the Shea Rink. Mm -hmm. The thing is, uh, I, I think you're right. You're 100% right. The, the fact that the state was losing over $350,000 a year in running that rink is a complete disgrace. And, and, it, and, it, and it, you know, just at least if we have it, we're on top of it, and we're on top of the costs. And it's, I, I, I want to just say that, you know, I mean, President Quigley has told me uh, at Curry that uh, you know this this is a major undertaking. This is taking up a lot more time of his staff than he thought. And mm -hmm. um, Curry has really done a magnificent job. Compared, I mean, because they're taking up the slack of uh, complete laziness for 15 years, and and you know trying to get make something of it. And it, it, I think everybody I've talked to at these games has said, you know, geez, it's, it looks much better. Yeah, the more, the more it's an attractive place, it's just going to attract more, more people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we do want to make sure that, you know, that, that Milton gets its fair share of ice time and it gets it at, at a reasonable rate. Mm -hmm. and, but well, in, in to that, I mean, I think you're, you're right. We're lucky, you know, we're not Ridge Arena and all that, but we have, we have, I think we have built-in customers. <clears throat> Yes, you know, in Curry, in Milton Youth Hockey, in mm -hmm. Milton High, that we can we can work with right. to kind of get where we want. They have that Commonwealth skating, and there's other people involved. Mm -hmm. But those are the three main ones, the mm -hmm. main users, you know. Right. So. so I'll report out with the chairman at your next meeting. Um, I should be in touch with Mr. Madden by then, and I'll have a better update. Good. Are, are we awaiting a, a report from Curry for, on the present years? Um, uh, we we had one report. I don't know if the yeah, couple of months. Back in old now, so I November figured I have to go back and look. Uh, there'll okay. be another report forthcoming. Okay. And the DCR, I think, had 60 days, and you'll see by the heading of this letter, it was dated December 15th. So the 60 days have come and gone now, and so we should be hearing from DCAM much, uh, a, a lot more information should be coming out now. After this guy comes back on vacation. Right. Now, I don't know if he's on vacation, he's just not in the office till Monday, that's all okay. I Machine <laughs> said. All right. Okay. That's my report, Mr. Chairman. Um, chairman's report, I just basically discussed what I was going to discuss, so we, we discussed the rink, so nothing, to re nothing else to report. New business, Mr. Shields. Um, do we know uh, when the last time we put the ambulance contract out to bid? So I'm going to say the last. It, I don't think it's been while well you're a town administrator because it hasn't been well on the selectmen, I don't think. I think they had a, it, that's, uh, I think we went out for five year and I have to go back and look. Okay. Um, I, I thought we did go out a couple of years ago or extended it for a year or two. I'll go, uh, maybe I, we I can report that out. Yep. I, I'll tell you why. Um, a, an older gentleman um, stopped me the other, told me the other day that, um, he had a relative that took an ambulance trip from Winter Valley to the hospital, and it cost 1400 bucks. And I got to tell you, uh, when I heard that, I just said, well, wait a minute, that's, that's a little bit. I, I, I just like to review. Yeah, those rates aren't set by the, by the contract with, with the town and, and in the ambulance company. Right, but Those sometimes by DPU or sometimes the, if you put something out to bid, the cost, you know, costs are reduced. I mean, I, I just, 
I just think that that to me is prohibitive. Uh, yeah, because I think the only time is, is if you call 911 for an ambulance. That's the time. Yeah, this was, the, the this was a ambulance. Winter Valley call. It wasn't a 911 call. Yeah, that, I, then it'll be just private. That's a private transfer. According yeah. to him, you know. And I, I just thought that, you know, elderly people dealing with $1,400 bills to transfer somebody a few blocks is, uh, it just seems exorbitant to me. And, and if we can review the contract and just um, see what we can do, I, I just, uh, I think that's a lot of money, you know. Yeah. Report that. Any further new business? Uh, yeah, just something I want to bring up. Um, I was at the uh, Tucker Neighborhood, that's why I was late getting here, because I was at the Tucker Neighborhood uh, Association meeting. And they, they did bring up one thing of concern to them, uh, and I wasn't sure of the answer. Um, we knew there was, a, uh, there was a typo in the uh, town warrant that went out for May 6th in the terms of the precincts and the voting locations, uh, that the town clerk sent out a, um, a notice of, uh, for, is it precinct? 11 oh, or 9? The, the new precinct 11. Okay. There is no new precinct 11. There's well, only I mean, 10. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. The, the, old, yeah. the old precinct 11. And the new precinct, precinct 10? Or 10 or it's a Cunningham Hall it's location. It's, it's going to yes, Cunningham, it's Cunningham yeah. Hall. It used to be the Tucker School, and now it's going to Cunningham Hall. Right. right. And, and there was concern that the only place that that was being published in terms of the, um, uh, the change or, or the error was in the paper and they were concerned that residents would not see it. Um, the town clerk did send out a notice to every registered voter individually, because they all came, you know, and because my kids uh, still vote out of my house, and they all received a postcard right. telling them of the And that's what created the original confusion. Of, of the new location. We have published it on the town website. It's been published in the uh, local newspaper. Um, it'll be published again. If anybody has any questions, they need to just you know, contact the town clerk's office, look at the website. Um, they'd, they'd ask for perhaps a reverse 911. Yeah, we can look into a reverse 911. Because they, they were concerned because of the fact that the postcard went out and, and was really the start of the confusion because you had a postcard saying one thing and the, that, that people would just still be confused. Wow. But well, we might have time to, to um, do that for the Tuesday election, the presidential primary, just as a as a warm up for the municipal election. Yeah. yeah. Well, I believe if that's we what you're talking that. about. Getting yeah. get information out before the primary. Yes. Okay. Um, that's, uh, any that's old business? No old business. Uh, I'll make a motion to enter into executive session for the purpose of conducting strategy sessions in preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel and to discuss strategy with respect to litigation, believing that having these discussions in open session would have a detrimental effect on the bargaining litigating position of the body and return to open session only for the purpose of adjournment. Second. Uh, Mr. Hurley? Yes. Mr. Shields? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Uh, 